Hello my beautiful friends, my name is Kristen, I'm always known as Kitty Plays, and today we are doing a video! Do you want to know 20 things I don't buy anymore? I thought I got pretty creative with these because honestly I was watching a few videos, everyone says the same stuff, so I'm going to try and include things that you can be paying attention to that maybe you don't need to buy anymore. Maybe you can change your spending, your buying habits a little bit to change your life. If not, don't. It's up to you. I really... I really just want you to be happy. So whatever makes you happy, go for it. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to spank that subscribe button, tap that like button, and leave a comment down below. I have been in the process of reinvigorating my channel, reimagining it to who am I now? I feel like we're such developing beings all the time. And so it becomes difficult, especially when you make content online, if something that you were super passionate and excited about one day, uh, you grow and change and you're not as super excited and passionate about it. So we're trying out just being myself and hopefully inviting community members like you watching right now where we can just have a good time together. My intention is to just make you feel a little bit more loved today and appreciated and seen. So thank you for coming to the video today. I didn't think I'd ever be filming this video um, because I didn't think this would be my content, but Actually, when Holly suggested that we make this video, I was like, cool, because each of these things is important to me. I'm not like a super minimalist, but I'm definitely conscious of the things that I buy. Um, and so let's just get into it. If you can get inspired by this to just be more mindful, um, or maybe this is going to inspire you for things to buy. You know, maybe I'm going to put you on to some great reusable products. Like, wouldn't that be the dream? So let's get into it. Let's start off with a really big one, and that is fast fashion. Um, I forget the movie exactly, but it's a documentary that pretty much exposes the fast fashion industry. Um, I had already stopped kind of buying fast fashion when I watched this, but it definitely made me like more conscientious about um, the impact that I was having when I was purchasing the things that I was. I would just buy it every season, especially the trendy items are so fun to buy because then you're not spending so much money on a trend and you can wear it for the trend and then you can get rid of it. Um, but I've shifted to more of like a buy quality um, and or buy reused clothing even. Like this top is Alexander Wang, it's from The Real Real. This skirt is Stella McCartney, but it's also, both of them are used. So getting more creative and uh, buying used clothing, like that to me is just so cool because something that someone else gets sick of it can be like someone else's treasure and it, it does feel a little bit like treasure hunting when you find the perfect boots or the perfect things like you feel like you hit the jackpot um so yeah i just i think i think it's really fun i think it provides a little bit more of a challenge and it just makes us be a little bit more intentional but then you have really quality fabrics like i've washed this stuff so much and uh, it still looks great. There's no pilling, there's no seams um, pulling out. Like if you buy quality, you get to wear it more often. And uh, they do the math on it where ultimately, if you can buy a whole new wardrobe for $300 at Forever 21, like the amount of time that it takes for those clothes to break down if you're wearing them regularly, versus just buying a wardrobe. It might be more expensive at first, so I know it's not feasible for everybody, but buying good quality pieces over time, especially like classic timeless pieces, like your jeans or your shoes, um, or like a specific bag, um, then it's just not going to break down as fast and you can really put love into it. And then maybe even if something happens, you'll repair it and we'll stop looking at clothing as consumables. So the next one kind of feeds into fast fashion. It's new clothes for every season, especially with streaming. I was like very, very into like having a cute new wardrobe for the season. And I think it was also trained into me for like back to school clothes shopping as a kid. But it's just this idea that I don't need a whole new wardrobe every season. Um, and what I do is like more periodically throughout the year, if I just feel like there's a hole in my closet, um, I will fill it <laughs> and then I won't buy new. I'm, I'm buying used from Poshmark. Like you can Google like, oh, I do, I need a new black top. And you Google black crop top and that pops up and then you can choose from a variety of them. And uh, I just really love this system for myself right now, but 
Again, you guys can try it out. So the next one is processed groceries. Um, as we all know, or if you don't, I'll tell you now, heavily processed foods are not very good for you, especially in the United States. There's just so many additives. Like if you compare the box of like a box of oatmeal in Canada versus a box of oatmeal here, like the amount of ingredients that you don't need that are in the American foods now is just so crazy. Um, so I've really tried to avoid for myself buying processed foods. So if I do shop, which I don't usually, I mostly just buy foods on Amazon, Whole Foods, um, and have it delivered. But if I do shop, you shop the perimeter of the store. Like I almost don't even touch that center area unless I want like some plantain chips or some rice crackers. Um, so it's switching away from just not having processed foods in my house and having to learn to cook with whole real ingredients has been like, super super influential for me and then when I'm hungry and I'm getting like or if I want to like snack and things like that I have to snack with a banana or with um, some plantain chips or things like that and it just causes me to well, get more creative and learn more recipes because most things aren't prepared for me if I'm not buying processed um, and then just also eat most more simply and I find that this really helps me like stay looking great and feeling healthy because I'm not overindulging in processed foods, so. Um, makeup wipes. This is another one. I used to buy a ton of makeup wipes. I used to buy a ton of cotton rounds. I don't buy those anymore. I got um, reusable um, makeup rounds. So I just put my cellular water on and do my face or like I have a hemp washcloth that I use. Um, I feel really good having those. Like they're kind of a pain in the butt if you're traveling and you don't want to bring all of them so you're having to like wash them yourself and dry them out and reuse them. But I just love, I feel like it's like not as harsh on my face and my skin when I do that. Um, and I feel really good about not adding a ton of garbage to the system all the time. So another thing I don't buy anymore is expensive skincare. Oh my gosh, I grew up in the age where it was like, you need La Mer under eye cream or you will begin looking old and you need all this expensive stuff and if you don't have all this expensive stuff then your skin's gonna be bad or you need to go to a dermatologist and get the top stuff. Every dermatologist I've ever gone to, they've like put me on like Cetaphil or what is it, Sarah V? Like the, the products, like those products have such a great line. You know, you put a vitamin C on in the morning um, and maybe a retinol at night um, and just nice moisturizer depending on your skin type. I don't really do a lot of cleansing. Like I remove my makeup and I wash with water a lot. Sometimes I do no moisturizer. Um, and that to me has just like, the less I do with my skin, the healthier my skin is. Wear your sunscreen, that's super important. I save so much money, my skin is just as great. Um, and my skincare routine isn't as complicated in the morning too, so I'm saving time as well. So I think expensive skincare can be fun, but ultimately my skin loves the basic products. The next one is in-game items. And this might be a surprise to some of you guys. I um, stopped buying in-game items. I just found that in-game, first of all, they make you convert your money to like a currency or like a token, and then you spend those tokens. So your brain is not calculating how much money each thing is anymore. You're in like the token space, and it's actually been proven that if you create, if you have to exchange it to another form of currency, your brain doesn't view it the same. It doesn't have the same emotional attachment as like your national currency, you say. Um, and so you just end up buying all this stuff. And while it's cool to have your friends be like, wow, you have the new item, you know, for a second and to look at your gun and then be pretty or like look at your character and it be pretty. Um, ultimately, like that feeling wears off so fast. Like people stop complimenting it. Um, you stop caring about it. And so while there's that little high you get from having it, um, I don't think it's worth the amount of money that these in-game items cost. I guess it's just being smarter with my money is why I'm not buying in-game items. Um, and maybe putting that into an investment or a uh, savings account for a house or um, cryptocurrency instead. So maybe every time you don't buy an in-game item, you invest it somewhere else and see what happens. Cause then it has a chance to make money rather than you just losing it to the game developers. Um, the next one is unnecessary makeup. 
I used to just collect makeup and collect makeup and collect makeup, especially since the, the gaming brands or the makeup brands have gotten into gaming. Hallelujah! It's so freaking cool. Like, oh, I worked on a lot of those projects. Um, I think it's awesome that they're getting in, but then you end up getting a lot of product. And I can't use all the product. Thankfully, I have friends that I can give a lot of the cool stuff that I get away that doesn't suit me or doesn't suit my skin tone or I'm not using regularly but like my makeup bag is so small now I just have like the essentials to look my best I kind of apply Pareto's principle here where 20% of your effort creates 80% of your results so I'm like oh well then 20% of my makeup will create 80% of a good look I don't need the 80% that's just gonna make it a little bit better um, so you save money <laughs> Save money, save time, save space. Um, that's made a big difference for me. All right, the next one is non-usable home items. So this is like souvenirs, tchotchkes, it's the things that sit places that have no purpose other than like looking good. But I feel like there's so many products now that are usable that look good, whether it's like a speaker or a cool light. There's ways to set a mood and make a room feel very, like vibey without having a ton of stuff. Like especially recently, like I'm house sitting right now, so this is not my home, but all my stuff is in storage and having stuff is heavy. Like if you're planning on being in a place for a long time, it's fine, but every time you have to move, you have to pick all that stuff up and move it. So just less is more for me and having more purposeful items is important for me and uh, not spending my money on things that aren't creating either a good mood or a good environment for me or more wealth is important so um the next one's alcohol this is a personal one um i quit drinking december 21st last year 2020 um and i haven't obviously spent money on alcohol since um and that has saved a lot of money and um yeah my decision to go sober was um personal i put a goal of i will have a drink once i reach 20 million dollars um i just don't want an excuse not to be pursuing my highest transformation of my being and when i would be hung over uh i would do that or i just felt like i was using alcohol to numb myself like if I was celebrating, I would numb. If I was feeling down, I would numb. And I've just learned to like sit. If I'm feeling bad, I just like sit in it. Like if I am excited and celebrating, I like sit in it. And if I'm feeling manic or depressive, like I just sit in it. And I'm like, this is okay. I'm feeling this way and I, it's okay. <laughs> Rather than after I'm pent up after stream having a drink, I just, I just sit down, have some tea or some water, um, and chill out. Like I lost some weight too when I quit <laughs> drinking because you don't realize how many little random calories you're getting if you're having like a beer after stream or um, things like that. So yeah, personal decision. If you still drink, not judging at all. The next one is seasonal decorations. If you guys watch my streams for you know seven or eight years, you know that I would go all out with my background. I love making it a vibe for you guys where it was like. Christmas tree, lights, I'd print out things, I'd write on it. And that was the case for Halloween, Christmas, a bunch of different things. One, they cost money. Two, you have to store them. Three, a lot of them aren't very well made. It's like really smelly plastic. Like, you know, it's just like not very, like it's not a very good quality. I would way rather put that money into investing and making my home really beautiful and having good quality pieces. Um, rather than uh, have a bunch of decorations and have to worry about storage for them. Gel nails, yay! I stopped, uh, or I guess acrylic. I stopped getting nail extensions. These are my natural nails. Um, I've just taken more time to take care of them, grow them out. It just costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time to get them done all the time. Um, so I have just switched to natural and I love them. Yay. Uh, the next one's eyelash extensions. I'm wearing a, an eyelash um, strip right now. Um, I stopped getting eyelash extensions a while ago. I just didn't like having to sit in a chair for two hours, like every two or three weeks. They're super expensive, typically, if you want really good quality ones and the right softness, etc. Um, and so I just didn't love doing that. Um, 
Personal decision, I think eyelash extensions are really fun and people feel like it saves them a ton of time, but I'm so quick with a little with a little glue lash and I like that I can go between dramatic and um, very natural and simple, not having eyelash extensions. So the next one is books. I don't buy any books. Uh, personally, I read everything on my iPad. Some people don't like that. If you don't like the lit screen, try out a Kindle. You can get like the ones that aren't even lit at all. It's just the text. Um, I just think it's so nice, especially when you travel as much as I do, not to have something that you're carrying around, lugging around is great. Uh, very important not to have that extra weight. It's just like, I know I'm talking about the weight a lot today, but it makes such a big difference when, like energetically, when you just know there's not a ton of stuff that you, like you could just go. <laughs> you don't have to lift and carry and bring a ton of stuff with you. So I love that. Uh, the next one is dryer sheets. I got these little wool balls. You don't need to buy usable dryer sheets anymore. Also, they can sometimes have a lot of chemicals in them. So I got those little wool balls. I add some essential oils like lavender um, if I want my um, stuff to smell nice right onto the wool ball and you just throw it in and you can just keep using them over and over and over and over and over. Next one's costume jewelry. Uh, this was pretty important to me. I used to buy a ton of costume jewelry too. This kind of goes along with fast fashion. Um, and then I really realized that, you know, I don't really wear trendy pieces. How would I spend time? I'm not wearing any of it right now. How would I spend time, uh, more time saving before I make a purchase and I buy stuff that's real gold and like real stones and um, makes me feel luxurious and like a queen and like more of an embodiment of like my sovereignty and the way I move. And so I think having real precious metal jewelry. Um, one, if you know stuff ever hits the fan, then you can go and sell it. So that's a nice backup. Two, it's not like tarnishing your skin. Like a lot of costume jewelry you wear like two or three times, or if you accidentally wear it in the water um, or in the shower or something like that, then it doesn't look good anymore. Um, so I just stopped buying that. Again, same with fast fashion. The amount of times I would buy costume jewelry in fast fashion, that money gets pooled and then I make a bigger purchase for something more classic that I'm gonna wear and feel really good putting on my body. Um, the next one is coffee from coffee shops. Uh, I stopped doing this one a while ago, a long time ago, um, and invested in a coffee maker. So there's so many different levels for this. You can start with a French press, which makes phenomenal coffee every time. You can get a pour over. Um, I have a Breville machine, which makes phenomenal espresso and lattes if people come over and want them. Um, and they don't have the pods either. Um, so you're making, you're grinding your own beans. And I just think over time, like the pods get quite expensive. Um, over time, like being able to grind your beans and um, make your own espresso, it's so easy to learn or grind your beans and make your own French press. And then it like becomes this like ritual with yourself. Um, and I like to put a lot of like loving intention into it too. This may be a little far off for some of you, but like, it just feels good to make a cup of coffee and like be involved in the process of it. Um, I was listening to an interesting podcast with Tim Ferriss, I forget his name, um, and he was talking about how he went and wrote an email to thank every single person in the coffee process, from the person that made the steel for grinding the beans, to the farmers themselves, to the ceramic of the cup, and he ended up emailing a thousand different people for one cup of coffee. And that's just like so meaningful to me. So coffee really for me has become this really beautiful morning ritual. Um, plastic water bottles, this is important too. Um, I know I said in the beginning about the environmental stuff, but I just like having a reusable bottle or buying glass bottles um, and just trying to contribute less to the plastic bottle stuff. Like remember guys, every single time you're spending money, you are voting like i kept thinking this like so much of the water here especially in the united states where i am um is you can't drink the tap water like in canada i think most places you, all places you can drink the tap water and it's really good and i'm like if you put together all the money that people are spending on plastic water bottles like for a week in la maybe a month and you went and you put all that money and you invested in it in fixing the water systems and filtering it better so people could drink tap water, then couldn't we solve this problem and then everyone could drink delicious tap water that was good for them? 
So it just got me thinking. So I'm trying to buy less plastic bottles, but thought that was kind of funny. This next one I don't think you guys are gonna like. Uh, it's bikinis. I don't know why, but bikinis became like a, <laughs> like a consumable. I just love them and they're such a vibe. Um, so I buy a lot less bikinis now. Um, you know, I think having like five or six of like some good quality bikinis that look good. Um, you can tie different bikinis so many different ways now. Um, so yeah, I stopped buying so many bikinis. It was just getting out of hand. I don't know if anyone watching this can relate to it. Um, but I just get bikini ads all the time and they're just so easy to buy and look different and look cute. The next one is advertised products. I think this is really important. The entire system is working towards making you consume more. And the algorithm is figuring you out every single day on exactly what you might buy and it is delivering it to you constantly. And that's the kind of scariest thing. Like I think the algorithm knows me better than I know myself, which is a little trippy, but um, just be a little bit more mindful when you're scrolling and you're seeing these like served products. People who are in their mid thirties like Lace or Luke, or Amanda, like I, they tell me all the time that they're like buying the ads that they see on Instagram regularly. And I just, I maybe I just have had more time like or younger on the internet that I've just like tuned that out, um, but they just go for it. And I don't know how I feel about that. So I think just be mindful about the products you're buying and making sure it's something that you need and actually is gonna help you. I mean, sometimes they serve you things that you're like, yeah, I was just saying I needed that. Um, which is fine, but I don't personally buy advertised products. I will go outside of the app. I don't want the app to know that I um, listen to it, which I guess my phone is listening to me right now. Uh, the last one, the fun one, is bras. I don't buy bras anymore. I am all for the free, the titty movement. Um, I just think it's way more comfortable. I've been learning a lot about how uh, not wearing a bra will actually help you uh, not um, gravitate towards the ground as much. Uh, I feel like I'm much more perkier and I feel better not being confined by a wire and a band. Um, I'll wear things like uh, sports bras and things like that. I have a couple bras, I don't buy them anymore. Um, and then my only exception to the bras thing is I have lingerie sets. Uh, which I love to wear, but I feel like that's more of like a costume, costume dress up sexiness with a partner, um, less of like an everyday use bra. So I don't buy everyday use bras. I only buy really beautiful ones. My favorite company is Honey Burdette. Um, you should check it out. If you are a man, buy them for your woman. If you are a woman, buy them for yourself because they are so cool. Um, and so yeah, the last one is bras. But um, yeah, I just feel better not wearing one all the time. I quit wearing bras about three or four years ago now. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Um, four years ago. Uh, um, and I love it. It's just one less thing to worry about putting on in the morning, one less thing to worry about buying, one less thing to feel a little constrained. Because I don't know if you've noticed in the theme of this video, it's like, how do I create more freedom? <laughs> I'm all about creating more freedom financially, with my time, with the amount of stuff I have. I want to feel free in this society and that's really important to me. So. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to spank that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new here, and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what stuff that you guys don't buy um, anymore. I think this is a really interesting topic, um, and maybe that's something that I can change in my life or observe or be mindful of. Um, so yeah, thanks for being here, guys. I will see you on the next video. Bye.